Hey there ladies and gentlemen and welcome back. I'm your host Patson and today we're going to be taking a look at r slash cheating stories where OP saw a video of his wife with another man. So hold on to your dragon balls because this is a long one. Let's begin. My wife cheated. I'm so angry that I'm scared of myself. Posted by Reddit user KeyNebula8048. So, I am a bit lost, been about two weeks since I found out, I've been suspicious for a while, lots of red flags, but nothing definite. I decided to confront her and her reaction, irrational anger, how can I accuse her of something like that? She would never cheat. Made me sure. I snooped on her phone and computer, but couldn't find anything, so I bought some small cameras and placed them around the house. Then I went to visit some friends over the weekend. I grew up in Norway close to the Swedish border, I met my wife in Sweden, I was 20 she was 21, and she had a 3 year old kid when we met. We hit it off, and I have been that kid's dad for the last 11 years. I love that guy, I consider him my son. We have been married for 6 years, not that it matters. Long story short, I went home early, when I knew she wouldn't be there, and watched the footage. Sure enough, there she was, doing adult stuff with another guy. I recognized him as a work colleague Theodore, we were friendly with him and his wife. I used to believe seeing red was just a figure of speech, but I was seeing red. I have never been that angry, I am actually a very mellow guy, I never really get angry, but I just lost it. I hit the walls, I kicked the bedroom door so hard it flew off its hinges, and smashed the glass table we had in a living room. I bit the inside of my cheek, I didn't even notice. But when I screamed, I sprayed the wall and floor with blood. At some point, I managed to hit my head pretty hard, and that snapped me out of it. I looked at the carnage, and I knew I just had to get out of there. Had my wife walked in at that point, I think I would be in jail. In the best case scenario for domestic violence, and in the worst case for murder. I quickly packed a suitcase with essentials in my laptop, I work with simulation and modeling, and my computer is custom, and I need that to do my job. I sent a copy of the video to Theodore's wife, I didn't really write anything in the message apart from, your husband is cheating with my wife. I met my son just outside our apartment complex, I gave him a hug told him I would always love him, but that his mother was cheating on me so I had to leave. I really regret telling him, he shouldn't be burdened with that, but I wasn't really myself at the time, and it just came out of me. I went to the border, I wanted to go see my family in a Norway, but they didn't want to let me cross due to COVID. I've been renting a cheap airbnb. I'm working but I'm like a zombie, I haven't talked to my wife. The only person I have responded to is my son. He's been asking me questions, I've been honest with him as far as possible, that I don't know what is going to happen next, apart from divorce. I've been trying to find a good lawyer, I've received hundreds of messages from my wife and her part of the family. I haven't responded to any of it. My parents are the only ones that know in my sight as far as I know. I don't want to talk to my friends, because they are friends with my wife as well, so I don't really have good support at the moment. I'm afraid that if I talk to her or see her again, I will lose it and do something I can't take back. I also don't want to lose contact with my son, but I have no idea where to even start. I am still boiling with rage, and I don't know how to get past that, I need to respond to my wife at some point, but I'm so angry that I don't think I'm capable of being rational. I just wanted to try to write this out and see if that helps, so far, I would say it's made no difference at all. Before we get to today's commentary, I want you guys to listen to this common exchange between OP and Reddit user 33 say what 33. What is she saying in the texts? It's all over the place, from I am sorry, it only happened once, please come home to it's actually your fault. Yup. This is a classic in the cheater playbook. Blaming the victim for their shitty behavior. Gaslighting them. Make him think he is the problem. So how exactly was this OP's fault? Did OP strip her down for the affair partner and put her on top of him? Did OP push his wife and she fell into the affair partner's dick? I hate it when cheaters blame the spouse. If there was something missing from the marriage or you supposedly not making enough time for sex or affection, they should just communicate that to you. If that didn't work, just get a fucking divorce. End of story. OP's wife is just a piece of shit human being for doing this. OP, don't let her make you think that it's your fault. Because it's not. 
So sorry this happened to you. I don't advise you doing this, but if you really want to, then try to see if you can get some kind of visitation rights with your stepson. Try to get some therapy in as well if you can. It will really help with the heartbreak and rage you're feeling. You did well on exposing her affair to her son and the affair partner to his wife. Now finish the job and tell the rest of their friends and family. Do it now before she starts spreading some ridiculous lie. Get a lawyer and go no contact. Now, let's listen to OP's first update. I'm doing better. I actually visited a cage fighting club. I should really stress that I do not know how to fight at all. I am not really in great shape. The few times that I ended up in a fight in my youth, I've had my ass beaten badly. I talked to them and explained the situation. They were actually really friendly and eager to help. First, they made me work out for two hours, and when that didn't take the edge of my anger, they put me in the ring with a very experienced fighter. It was clear he was really gentle with me, and even though I did my best, I didn't even give him a workout, it's pretty clear he let me punch and kick him, but he easily blocked whatever I threw at him. The few times I managed to land a blow with a little bit of force, he was quick to give me a smack back. Since I have no clue what I'm doing, his gentle taps slapped me around hilariously. He would always ask if I was okay before proceeding again, he even apologized a few times for hitting me during our little session, when he thought he had maybe hit me too hard. Imagine that, apologizing for hitting the opponent in a fight, he clearly didn't see me as an opponent at all, I doubt he would see me as a threat ever. I have a newfound respect for people that know how to fight, and I am determined to learn it. These guys were the most chill people I have ever met. I want to be as calm as them. My little fight helped a lot, it really took the edge off. I don't have that burning anger, I am still pissed, but now it's manageable. I will go back for training and more beatings. Still, I don't rust myself to meet my wife. I have talked to my son, I told him that no matter what we would be okay. I consider him my son, no matter what happens between his mother and me. I think he really appreciated that. I have talked to a few common friends and her parents, apparently my wife has become sort of unglued. She's been calling and talking to everyone at all hours, day, and night. She has apparently been confessing everything to almost everyone, and even offering money to anyone that's going to put her in touch with me. I was considering only speaking to my wife via a lawyer, but I can't afford that, so I've asked my cousin to act as a go-between. I gave her a few questions to put forward, so we see where it goes from there. I plan to contact the affair partner's wife next week as well. Some Redditors strongly suggested that I talk to my wife and tell her that if I can adopt my son, I will consider reconciliation. But I would never do that, I will not use my son as a pawn in anything ever. As things stand now, I would love to adopt him, but only if he asks me to, and only if I am sure it's what he wants and that he isn't influenced or pressured by anyone. I will get through this I think, I have received so much good advice on here. I feel like I have a plan now to move forward with. I highly suggest that you talk to a lawyer first about the adoption, OP. Maybe the laws are different in your country, but that could get you in on child support. Your soon-to-be ex-wife is someone who could turn nasty and try to drag you to court repeatedly to get child support. Take your time and keep going to the gym. It sounds like it's a great outlet for you. You're letting your intelligence guide you. I really respect that. You're facing some of the most difficult things a married man could face, and yet, here you are, standing strong. One more thing. To the people that suggested using the kid and his adoption as a tool for reconciliation, go fuck yourself. Now, for OP's second update. I'm sorry it's been radio silence, I've had my hands full since my last post. I see a lot of questions in my personal messages, so I figured it's easier just to make this update. I started calling my son twice per day after my last post. He would always tell me everything was okay, but I guess it really wasn't. I was focusing on trying to get myself under control, I started going to individual counseling, that helped some. But what really changed things is when I went to try boxing, the first place I visited was kind of grimy and rundown. Still. The five guys that were there seemed to have this amazing camaraderie going on. And I really, really, really wanted in on that, I wanted to belong there badly. They all told me I had to talk to the old man, he was the owner of the place, apparently, he decided who could join or not. 
They all had a lot of respect for him, so I was kind of apprehensive. Let's just say that the old man has an abrasive personality. To begin with he just listened, but once he started talking, I was quickly getting more and more agitated. There wasn't anything I can really put my finger on, everything he said was true, and maybe that's what angered me, or maybe it was the tone. Like every question or sentence was an accusation of sorts. The old man made me feel like I was not good enough to become a member of his club, and I suddenly found myself in a position of arguing with him for him to let me prove that I was worthy. I still haven't figured out if he is just an asshole or some kind of genius. That said, the old man has really affected my life in a very positive way, even though he is very uncomfortable to be around. I am starting to see why people have such respect and admiration for him. The old man has helped me understand why I was so angry and how to think more clearly moving forward. It's a story in itself, but this is already getting long, so back to the main issue. A few days after my post, about 20 minutes after I had talked to my son, he called me back. He was crying and he apologized for lying to me. He lied when he said everything was okay at home. He went on to tell me that my wife was just sitting in front of the TV, staring at it even if he turned it off. He didn't have any food to eat, the house smells, and the only thing he had eaten in the last two days was some sandwiches a friend's mother had made for him when he visited. Of course, I immediately rushed home, I could smell the rotten garbage in the hallway, even before I got in the door. The house was an absolute filthy mess, it clearly hadn't been cleaned since I left almost a month ago, the floor wore covered in crumpled up sheets of paper, overflowing dirty dishes in the sink. Broken glass on the floor. Rotten garbage smell, absolutely disgusting. I went to check on my son first, I had picked up a burger for him on the way over, I asked him to stay in this room and eat while I go and talk to his mum. I assured him everything would be okay, I was home, I was going to take care of him. He cried and hugged me for a bit before I went to check on his mother. That hug felt so good, I had missed him so much, I am never leaving him again. My wife sat staring at the screen like my son had described it to me. What he didn't tell me was how terrible she looked, she had lost a terrifying amount of weight, she was just skin and bones. Her eyes were sunk into her head, dark rings, lifeless skin, cracked lips, messy dirty hair, filthy clothes. I grabbed a chair and set myself down between her and the TV, the smell coming off her was absolutely terrible. There was a bucket on the floor, later found out it was half full of a week old vomit. I felt a deep pain for her, I wanted to protect her, help her, make her better. For a while, I completely forgot what she had done. Seeing her like this was really painful for me. I guess in some ways, I still love and care for her, despite what she has done. That fact kind of terrifies me. Something is wrong with me too, I think. I didn't know what to say to her to be honest, she was clearly not all there. She actually asked me if I was real. When I said yes. She broke down crying in a way I've never seen anyone cry before. Her crying, her wailing, is probably a better word, was so loud it sort of startled me. Without warning, mid-screen she either fell asleep or passed out. I put my Fitbit on her arm because I don't really know how to take someone's pulse, her heart rate was varied up and down between 100 to 150, so I figured that's probably not good. I made sure she was in a comfortable position on the sofa, and I wiped the snot of her face before I ran and asked our neighbor for help. They were happy to look after our son while I took her to the hospital. She has been there for seven days now I think. I'm a bit blurry on the days to be honest. I have visited once, but she got so upset from seeing me that the doctors recommended that I don't visit for now. They have no diagnosis for her yet, and they have no idea of when or even if she will come out of it. I have been focusing on taking care of my son since I have made sure he has regular individual counseling and he looks like he is doing better now. There is no doubt he has been traumatized by this. I am drowning in guilt for my part in causing him this pain. I have been in contact with a lawyer to try to get custody rights for obvious reasons. I don't know how that will work out. I have also prepared for divorce, but I am holding off for the time being. It took us several days to clean the house. I decontaminate the fridge with bleach and still it smelled like rotten food, so I actually had to get a new one. I also found that my wife had taken all my dirty laundry into bed and made a body shape of it, it had some additions to make it look anatomically correct and it's kind of disturbing to be honest. I looked through all her papers that she left all over the house, it's incoherent nonsense for the most part. Some pages have dates and times. 
I can't understand most of it, apart from some pages that have long lines of sorry, 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 written on it. Most pages with text just transition into a wiggly line in the middle of a sentence. I don't know what to do. My anger is completely gone, replaced by sadness of the situation and for the trauma and pain inflicted on my son. I feel bad for my wife, but I also understand why I was angry and how I have changed to deal with the pain. I have left a huge piece of myself behind, and she caused that. I don't know if I have it in me to forgive that. A big part of my personality was being a good husband and provider for a long time, that part of me was mortally wounded by her affair, I left that part of me behind, it was just too painful to keep. It's too early to say anything about where we end up, as for now all avenues are open. I am still hurting and confused, I will just continue to try to rebuild my self-esteem and my self-image of my masculinity, if my wife comes out of it, I will talk to her and see where I go from there. Right now, I need to focus on my son, I need to make sure he is okay. Holy shit this sounds so over the top. It sounds like a plot to an anime to be honest. But let's just assume that this story actually happened, okay? So, OP. If it takes abusing a loving partner's trust, neglecting your son, having a mental breakdown, and getting institutionalized for someone to learn to appreciate and not cheat on your partner? Yeah, I think that's plenty of reasons to divorce. Why the hell are you hesitating? This entire situation is manufactured from her own stupid decisions, and you shouldn't have to foot the bill in caring for her or dealing with the emotional instability she's going through. It was all her choice. So stop taking responsibility for it, OP. Look, your life belongs to you, and you deserve better than being tied to someone who could do the things she put you and her son through. That's just a toxic relationship, OP. Stay the fuck away from it. I guess we can move on to OP's third update. Update 3. I have some questions, maybe you can help me shine some light on this from different angles. If you're going to post in the comments to just divorce, don't bother, I will simply ignore you. I know that in the end, whatever happens is my choice, so I will choose what is right for me and my family, whatever I decide that to be in the future. I haven't been sleeping much, and I am a bit dazed, so if I ramble a bit please bear with me. I really appreciate all the different perspectives you gave, it really helps me think things through. The wife is still in the hospital, she is refusing to allow anyone to see her apart from her mother. The only instructions she has given, apart from no visitors, is that no one is to talk to me on her behalf or try to pressure me in any way. She has confessed cheating to just about everybody, but not in any detail, her calls have been panicked along the lines of. I cheated, he is going to leave me, what do I do? So, people have been pretty much leaving me alone, unless I have called them to ask for their help or opinion. My wife has written me a letter, her mother handed over to me a few days ago. It is long, 32 pages. I will try to summarize the main points here. She apologized for what she's done to me, her son, and us, she says she will sign any paper I put in front of her, no questions asked. post up, divorce papers, whatever. She also confesses to a two-month emotional affair with another man online, before the current affair started that turned physical. I didn't know about this at all, so I believe she is being honest. Her confession is very detailed, and she has given me all her login credentials to everything to confirm that she is honest and not hiding anything. She freely admits that she was captivated by the attention and the excitement, but she seems genuinely confused that she allowed any of this to actually transpire. I believe what she has written is the truth. Emails, messages, call logs, etc. backs her story up, and she has also pointed me to a thumb drive hidden in one of her drawers that contained a diary going back almost 10 years. Her diary and her letter seem to be in perfect sync from what I have read so far. She explains that the first emotional affair online was more of a game than anything else, flirting only. No sexting or meetup. It went on until suddenly one day, she felt compelled to send this guy a message. She immediately ended it then. She couldn't find the courage to tell me, but according to the diary she was trying. When the main affair started, she was flattered and given a huge ego boost from this guy giving her attention. He is a very handsome guy, model type, and I have met his wife, and she is absolutely stunning. 10 out of 10 jaw-droppingly beautiful. My wife's ego rush got addictive it seems, getting attention from this beautiful guy that was married to such a beautiful woman, gave her a huge boost. 
she felt like she must be very special to out-compete his beautiful wife for a fair partner's attention. She admits she knew what she was doing was wrong, but she's also seems genuinely confused that she was unable to stop herself. She hates herself for losing control. If I understand this correctly, the affair only turned physical once the affair partner started to lose interest in her. She started using sex to keep him interested, to keep him giving her attention. From the diary, the sex seems to be more of a chore for her, she doesn't seem to enjoy it, she does it just to get more attention, like it's a reward she gives him for that. It's clear she is struggling with guilt, especially in the beginning, but she soon starts to compartmentalize this. But of course, we drifted apart and our relationship suffers, while she does this. The affair was physical for four weeks, and they kissed and fooled around with intercourse five times according to her diary and her confession. This is backed up with her location data and credit card bills for hotels, etc. The rest is history that you already know. Her letter concludes with the following. I don't know who the person was that had the affair, or at least I don't recognize myself doing it. I don't understand how I could so easily abandon my beliefs and my morals and hurt the people in my life that I love more than anything. I don't know why I wasn't able to stop myself. I will not insult you by asking you to understand or forgive me because I don't deserve understanding or forgiveness. My only hope is that I can be helpful in some way to help you and our son heal. I will do anything you ask of me, without question. I will do anything if you think it might help in any way, no matter how big or small. I will live with my mother once I am released from here, I will stay away unless you ask for me. I don't want to remind you with my presence of the pain I have caused both of you. I don't have the words to tell you how sorry I am for what I did, and my greatest wish is that you heal and find someone worthy of your love that you can be happy with. I pray I haven't permanently destroyed your ability to trust and love someone deserving in the future. I will not be with anyone else because I'm clearly not safe to be with. I will seek therapy to try to find and perhaps one day cure what is wrong with me, but as of today, I don't really know who I am or why I couldn't stop myself from doing these things. I knew what I did was wrong, that I was hurting everyone, myself included, but I did it anyway. I was selfish, I caused all of this just so I could feel a little better about myself for a brief moment. Once I saw the pain on your face, on the camera you left behind in the bedroom. The heartbreaking pain on your face, while you were watching the tape with me, and the other man. At that moment, I realized how delusional I am, and how terrible and evil I had become. I am afraid there is no salvation for me. I will always love you, I wish I could undo it all, take it all back. But I can't, I'm sorry. I ugly cried reading it, and I really don't know what to do. I've been up all night reading, and I am emotionally drained, confused, and unsure of everything. I watched the video again, and I also watched the video of me going insane, I don't remember a lot of what happened that was in the video. It is very painful to watch my wife's actions, but I have been looking at it over and over again. Why can't I stop looking at it? It is also very disturbing to watch myself go crazy, and I can't stop doing that either. I keep going back and watching it from start to the end, over and over again. I try to put it away, but an hour or so later, I find myself back watching it all over again. It's hurting me, so I don't understand why I do it. Also, is what she's saying even possible? That a person can be pulled into an affair where behavior becomes compulsive, like she describes it, where it's not really a free choice anymore. Maybe a wayward wife on here could share some insight? I also clearly see from her diaries that she probably developed a depression about three years ago after her favorite aunt died. Her perspective on life becomes very dark after this, almost hopeless I would say. I've read other stories where depression seems to cause drastic personality changes and be triggers for affairs. Any insight would be appreciated on this. She clearly never loved any of these men, she loved the ego boost, the increased self-esteem, the rush she felt from them seemingly telling her the right things. On D-Day she totally cut her affair partner out of her life and called his wife and told her about the affair. I know this because the affair partner's wife told me when I met her, she actually asked me if we could have a revenge affair. She was very focused on this, getting revenge. Like that would help anything? But beauty aside, she is probably the most annoying woman I've ever met. Talking to her was like nails on a chalkboard. Needless to say, we will not be having an affair and we will never ever meet in person again. I don't know what to do now, I can't sleep, I can't really think, so I could really use some help. OP, why she was in that affair? What caused her desire for it?
and if she was compulsive about it or not is something your wife needs to find out on her own. The main question should be why she distanced herself from you and no longer went to you when she needed love or sex or attention. Instead, your wife began to look outside the marriage for the things that she should get or can ask from you, her husband. We obviously know the reason for this, but for your wife, I guess she needs to figure that out in therapy. For you, OP, I have only one suggestion. Don't make any decisions right now. I highly suggest divorcing, but if you don't want to, then whatever happens next will be on you. That is not a decision you need to make today. Just take your time. No matter what, make sure your stepson is your top priority, if that's what you want. Then take care of yourself. And it would be best if you take the video and place it somewhere else. Don't look at it again. That's just really disturbing. And now for OP's final update. I am very grateful to everybody on this forum. I have received a lot of help to better navigate this disaster. I am okay now. I feel I am back in control of things. I've been trying to get to see my wife. She refuses still and her mother still acts as a go-between. I tried to call her out on her promise in her letter to me. That she would do anything if I thought it would help in any way. So, her mother relayed the message that I believed us talking would help. I also asked her to see her doctor together to try to help me understand. The doctor will not tell me anything without her present. I will try to be patient. In summary, I have been diagnosed with PTSD and my wife has been diagnosed with persistent depression and some bipolar disorder. She has a chemical imbalance in her brain, and they are trying out different medications for her. Many of you were right, her condition made her vulnerable, then a predator crossed her path, and here we are. Her affair partner has been cheating consistently on his wife for their entire relationship with multiple women in parallel most of the time. They are divorcing, the affair partner has been beaten up a bit, not badly from what I have heard. The affair partner's wife called the husbands of most of the women he has had affairs with. I have a friend staying with me most days, he keeps me focused. And I am going camping with my son this weekend. I was trying to confirm, if the descriptions in her diary were correct, that she considered the sex as a chore. And watching her disconnected behavior and facial expressions in the video, she is basically just waiting for it to be over. I have not decided what to do, but I have deleted the video of her and of me going crazy. It was just causing me pain, and I just couldn't put it away. One part of me is screaming at me to just walk away, to run and find someone else. What if she cheats again? How can I trust her? Can I get rid of the movie running on a loop in my mind? Will I divorce her in X years because I can't get past this, etc. I struggle a lot with these types of questions. But divorce would definitely mean that I lose some daily contact with my son and there is no doubt that he needs me, at least for now. He is terrified of being abandoned, not that strange considering recent events. I think if I leave his mother now, it would make things worse for him. If I can leave her like she is now? What's preventing me from leaving him? He will probably look at it like that. The two of us have started going to the boxing gym together, and we are bonded stronger than ever. Being there for my son is giving me tremendous strength and motivation to face this with an open mind. He is leaning heavily on me at the moment, so even if I decided to divorce, I'm not sure if I could actually go through with it in the short term. He has begged me not to leave him again, the two weeks I was away was very traumatizing for him, and I'm not exposing him to that again. There is no telling how long it will take for his mother to stabilize enough to be a good parent for him again. If I divorce now maybe she'd never recover? Even if I divorce her, I will still have the pain, I will still have the scars. I will bring that into any new relationship. I think that would greatly reduce the chances of such relationships being successful. Isn't it just as well that I am with her while I try to heal? At least she will know why I am acting like this and understand why I am struggling? If I leave her, what is really waiting for me out there? Single women my age seem to be either divorced for good reasons or they are so ravaged by baby rabies they will desperately go for anyone. They are not really considering if the person they choose is a good long-time partner for them. They seem very willing to play a role just to get into a relationship. That cannot last long-term, I think. It seems to me there is a high risk of a string of relationships that are doomed to begin with because one party is desperate and I am broken. 
dating strangers and random hookups doesn't really appeal to me. Also, how long would it take me to find someone that understands me as well as my wife? She is the only person in my entire life that I felt, she actually really gets me, and it took a long time to get to that point. Isn't that something I could use in my own healing? Would I ever be able to find someone again that could do that? How long would that take? There is no guarantee that a new partner wouldn't cheat as well. Given the circumstances, I actually think that the odds of my wife cheating again are lower than a new partner. My son also needs his mother, and she needs to heal before she can step back into that role. Will she heal faster and better if I divorce her? Or will she heal better if we try to reconcile? I don't fucking know. It's driving me nuts. How can I know she is safe to be around for my son if I'm not there with them? When it comes to my own healing, would I be better off alone or with her? Based upon what I have learned here, it seems those that choose that jump to divorce don't heal very well. It looks like the best outcome, as far as healing is concerned, is when the wayward actively contributes to the healing over a 3 to 5 year time period minimum. I don't know if she is even capable of that at the moment to be honest. So here I am, I am terribly conflicted, I have a million questions in my head, and basically zero answers. I still struggle with the two extremes, reconciliation, or divorce, and everything in between. I can't deny that I still love my wife, it turns out my bond to her isn't that easily broken. I really, really don't want to love her, the prideful side of me wants me to hate her. But I just can't lie to myself, I still love her deeply. And even though I fantasized about her getting hurt as badly as me the first few weeks, I don't want to hurt her or anyone. It wouldn't help me at all. Either way, I see a long painful road ahead of us, I hope I have the strength to stay the course and be patient enough to make sure I make the right choices for my family and me. The only thing I have been able to decide is that if I land on offering reconciliation. It will not just be given, I will need to see some effort. I will not offer reconciliation until I am absolutely sure we are two people, 100% committed to that path. Also, if we do reconciliation, she will basically be a prisoner on probation. I don't want to be that guy, but what choice do I have? If I feel I can't trust her? Either way we will need a lot of therapy. Maybe she doesn't even want to reconciliation? I just don't know. Not being able to talk to her is starting to become a real burden for me, it's stressing me out. I feel I really need to talk to her. If anyone has any good suggestions for these conversations I am all ears. Again, thank you all. God damn it OP. You whiny simp, I thought you were different. I thought you had self-respect. I even said that you were intelligent and that I have respect for you earlier in the video. What the fuck just happened? You already decided what you're gonna do. Then what's the point in asking these questions? You already decided not to leave your stepson with this woman all alone. And if that's the case, then you must have decided already that you can't leave her either because of your son. That woman is basically a walking red flag, saying that she is less likely to cheat on you? What? OP. She had two affairs at the very least. What the fuck are you talking about? Look, if you're willing to waste the rest of your life to be with your cheating wife, even after the betrayal, then it's your choice. We can't do anything about it. But do you know what you can do? Give a super thanks to me, your host Patson. Viewer support is the best way to help me continue to bring you daily stories and commentary that you can always watch here in my YouTube channel absolutely free. It's only a one-time donation and not a subscription. So please, consider donating. Just click the thanks button just below the video title or you can use my PayPal in the description box down below. Thanks for listening everyone. If you even somewhat enjoyed today's story, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, and if you really like it, make sure to subscribe to Patson to never miss a future upload. Stay strong.